Many people have been asking me how did I manage it because they could see that everything was uh, there, everything was just happening, people, things were being paid. So I told people that uh, it was through the diaspora funeral cash plan. So I would advise everyone to join this uh, diaspora funeral cash plan. Their policy is good because it took all the weight off my shoulders. Many people have been asking me how did I manage it because they could see that everything was uh, there, everything was just happening, people, things were being paid. So I told people that uh, it was through diaspora funeral cash plan. So I would advise everyone to join this uh, diaspora funeral cash plan. Their policy is good because it took all the weight off my shoulders. Many people have been asked. Um, this, um... Hello, viewers. This is NewZimbabwe.com, and my name is Anna Chibam. Uh, today, uh, we, on our program, Focus, uh, we're talking to our guest. Uh, she's a gender activist, and she's also a director uh, of uh, Zimbabwe's female uh, female. Prisoner Support Trust. Uh, her name is Dr. Rita Nyampinga. Miss Nyampinga, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anna, for inviting me. You're welcome. Uh, viewers, uh, Zimbabwe has got uh, 46 prisons and uh, it has an estimated uh, population of 20,000 inmates in those prisons. But uh, of late, we have had reports uh, that there have been abuse of prisoners, uh, there is also shortages of food uh, and clean water and so many issues that we will be discussing today. So for more, you can go to our website newszimbabwe.com or you can also visit our YouTube channel TV, or simply go to our Twitter and our handle is newszimbabwe.com. Uh, Miss Nyampinga, Maybe to start off our program, you can uh, just brief us. Who are you? Uh, Rita Nyampinga is a gender activist, as you have said before, a, a women's human rights defender. Um, I'm also director of Female Prisoner Support Trust, an organization working with female prisoners during and after incarceration. Our work involves a lot of advocacy, advocating for improved living conditions for women and children in prisons. But that does not limit us to say we are dealing with only female prisoners. There are times when we do uh, a comparative analysis to say is what is happening in the female prisons happening in the male prisons as well. That's our work. Yes, and for today, maybe to start off with, uh, we have had reports uh, that uh, during the January disturbances, uh, so many people were arrested, more than a thousand people were arrested, 
it's not been uh, they've not been tried in courts and those who have been tried in courts the cases are still pending what is tolling a progress in courts according to to your investigations um you know our justice delivery system uh yes it tries to address uh, some of these cases um, don't only for justice uh, magistrates are forced to uh, further remand, further remand, further remand. And this means that one is either, if he is considered to be dangerous or a nuisance to the society, is remanded in custody. And uh, they don't deal with those cases. And we are saying, as uh, human rights defenders, we are saying justice delay delayed is justice. So far, which was Peter. Mm. Politics is playing a part because we also know that some of these people who are dying uh, soon after being released, their cases have something to do with the, you know, the, the disturbances and all. So when they die, under such mysterious uh, circumstances, what does that tell us? Uh, that actually tells us that we can say politics is at play, but the issue here is you arrest to investigate, or you investigate to arrest. Because there are times when one is arrested and no thorough investigation has been made, and that person um, is taken to remand prison and the Zimbabwe prisons and correctional service, their duty is a custodianship duty where they take what is coming from the magistrate's court or a recommendation from the police. So we should look at each case. Is it the Zimbabwe prisons, uh, is it the Zimbabwe Republic Police who has brought in somebody whom they have tortured and throw him into prison uh, to raise his concerns? Because here we are speaking of rights, rights of, a, of an arrested person. He should be given time to speak to his lawyers. If he has been tortured or if he has been beaten by police, he should be able to tell that uh, to the lawyers. I think the main disadvantage that we have got is that we don't have enough information that we give to one when he is arrested. Absence of that information uh, limits one to have access to lawyers, access to legal services, access even to, to, to health services. But whose duty is it now to educate a, 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 a prisoner or someone who has not been convicted, somebody who is not serving, somebody who is just on remand, whose duty is it to give information? And if there's somebody, is Anna, that happening? Anna, the duty is with the duty bearers who are the Zimbabwe uh, Republic Police. They should have that information when they investigate. They should be able to ask uh, the arrested person, do you have a lawyer? Are you well? Are you sick? What else? Not to have this punitive approach. At times, uh, I don't have a case to answer. Or I don't know why I bought a phone in a shop and she was picked up because they traced it. They found her to be having that phone. So when we go to the shop, the guy actually said, yes, it's me. But when we go to the police station, they said, we, we have arrested you. We are going to detain you. I asked them, why are you, do you want to detain my daughter? They said, oh, yeah, because she, she received a stolen property. Said, did she know? She has got the receipts. She has shown you where she bought the phone. Why do you want to detain it? And they were so arrogant. They said, uh, you think uh, you know a lot of law. So that intimidation, one is bound not to say what he wants.
Okay, uh, Miss Nampinga, thank you. Uh, viewers, uh, if you just joined us, uh, my name is Anna Chibam, and you're watching newszimbabwe.com uh, on our program Focus. Uh, you, for more, if you want to hear more on this, you can go to our website www.newzimbabwe.com or you can go to our Facebook page. You can also go to our YouTube channel uh, that is Newsim TV or simply go to our Twitter. Our handle is newzimbabwe.com. Uh, Miss Yampinga, uh, maybe still uh, on your daughter's case, we now know that uh, the officers, uh, it, it's, it's been reported that uh, the police officers and even those from uh, the correct, uh, correctional services, uh, they also take bribes. And if you are poor, if you get arrested and you are poor, you, you don't see the, 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 the light, you get incarcerated. Uh, maybe you've done some investigations about that. Is it true? Uh, it depends from person to person. Remember when one is taking a bribe, it's very secretive. Remember, corruption itself is so embedded in us. I know I don't have a case to answer, but because I have been intimidated, I'm bound to go to the officer to say, so what can I do? That alone fuels corruption. That alone... Uh, uh, promotes bribery and we are saying if you are not so sure of what is happening it's better to engage a lawyer or to report to the highest office even if you give him money or whatever because I know I don't have a case or I have a case report if we are going to end corruption we nip it in the bad but we are promoting it we are fueling it so there are so many levels there are some level to to the lowest officer we can get some bad apples there okay viewers for now we're going for a break and uh, we just join us we are watching focus this is news zimbabwe.com uh, keep on watching and yet such a big taboo subject as africans uh, please don't put it off. Guarantee your family a decent send off. Talk to Diaspora Funeral Cashman today. They're just a phone call away and they will put you at ease when you need them. Fellow friends, um, family, and I can tell you that um, death is um, inevitable and yet such a big taboo subject as African death. Talk to Diaspora Funeral Cashman today. They're just a phone call away and they will put you at ease when you need them. They could see that everything was uh, there, everything was just uh, happening, people, things were being paid. So I've told people that uh, it was through diaspora funeral cash plan. So I would advise everyone to join this uh, diaspora funeral cash plan. Their policy is good because it took all the weight off my shoulders. Many people have been asking me how did I manage it because they could see that everything was uh, there, everything was just uh, happening, people, things were being paid. So I've told viewers, welcome back. Uh, you're watching newszimbabwe.com and on our program Focus today, uh, we have an uh, agenda activist with the director uh, of Zimbabwe Female Prisoners uh, uh, Trust. Uh, her name is Dr. Rita Nyampinga, uh, and uh, we have comments from our viewers. Uh, we have uh, somebody by the person feel, feel they are above the law. 
What do you say about that, Miss Nyampinga? No one is above the law. If we think uh, uh, there's somebody who is above the law because he occupies a high office, this is why we find the high levels of corruption. We need to empower each other. And we need serious enforcers. There are some, I can take um, uh, uh, an example of Lynette Mudewe. Uh, she actually uh, wa uh, was paid for, was compensated because she took a case further than what we as viewers or as citizens would think this is impossible. I cannot sue the police. You have a right to sue the police. This is why we are saying the information should be given uh, by the police itself, the, by the officer, because it's part of their training. Human rights is part of the police training. But it's because we are working with people who, 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 who do not respect uh, uh, human rights at all. This is why we are at this level now. I'm glad you see it the way I see it. Yes, we cannot, but we should keep pushing. We should keep pushing. As we highlight all these things through newszimbabwe.com, we are saying that if there's a gap in information dissemination, this is the time to use it. And this is the only time we can learn that we have rights. And those rights are in the Bill of Rights of our Constitution. Yes, you just brought us to the question that I wanted to ask. I wanted to say, does a prisoner have rights? And if so, is that prisoner being protected today in Zimbabwe by the Constitution? The prisoner has rights, but because of the economic meltdown, it seems as if the prisoner doesn't have rights. The prisoner has got right to food. The prisoner has got right to life. The prisoner has got right to education. What the prisoner does not have a right to is uh, freedom of association, associating with those who are at home because you are logged in. You can associate with other prisoners, but I cannot go and be with my husband in prison or my husband cannot be with me in prison. So all these rights that we are talking about, rights to education, right to health, uh, right to food. And we are not just speaking of mere food. A healthy diet, a nutritious diet, they've got that right. Because this forms the right to life. Is the food that we are giving to prisoners uh, nutritious enough so that they don't have any health problems. But from the reports uh, that we, from the stories, uh, you know, that we read every day, there's nothing like that in most prisons. People are almost doing without anything. They don't have. We are looking at the end. Now we are looking at prisoners who are incarcerated, who have no freedom. And we have had government talking about the open prison system. How far is that gone? We have an open prison system for men, yeah. not for women. And I thought the government, as we advocate for improved living conditions for women, they should take that into consideration. This thing has been on the cards 
since 1994. If you are asking Virginia Mwanigwa, she can tell you about this advocacy. Before I even started working in prisons, we have been hearing about an open prison for women. Up to now, we don't have an open prison for women. And the reason is that we don't have enough resources. But when we look at a female inmate, when she comes to prison, others come when they are pregnant and they give babies, give birth whilst in prison. Others bring in their children into prison yes. because they have no one to leave their children with. And when we look at the man, he doesn't come to prison with a, with a, with a, with a baby. Except for one man I knew of uh, in Vindura, I think it was 2014 or whatever year it was, who, who came to prison with, with, a, with his child. But that child was quickly to be father in prison. Yes, and uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, we have uh, prisoners uh, who go to prison for, for a short period, like three months, two months. Uh, when those are convicted, do you think with the situation that we are in right now, is people could, uh, we, we notice that uh, most people could do like uh, community service and that's where we also need the open uh, prison system so that people are not, you know, put in, a, in, in cells for a longer period. They should be doing something else, something economic. What's your comment on that? Uh, my comment on that, if he's a first offender, and these are petty issues, mm -hmm. I can tell you of the community that I work with, which are female inmates. Mm -hmm. uh, she is convicted for shoplifting, and she's given three months in prison. Can she not do community service? She can do community service. And uh, at times, there's an option of paying fine. This woman says, I three months saving, or you pay $100 fine for the offense. But the woman, because she has got nothing, she has done shoplifting, do you think she will be able to pay $100? Not. Obviously not, Anna. She finds herself behind bars. Because even if she has the hundred dollars, the children, they have nothing to put on the table. The woman weighs, she uses the balance of scale. If I pay hundred dollars, if I save three months, I'll be in prison for three months, I've saved a hundred dollars with the children again use the hundred dollars, so I can go to prison. So why am I saying that? It's because if there was an open prison, she would simply go and work there, or do community service. And community service in itself is enough punishment, and it's very degrading. It removes all your dignity. Because like you go to a school and start cleaning the toilets for the school children, they want to know where is this woman coming from. And, uh, 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 and there is a police or a prison officer who is supervising you. They know that she is doing it because she committed a crime. Yeah, and we, 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 we just noticed that to women, uh, the, the females in, in, in this day and age, you know, in, in this uh, difficult time that we are living in, and they are also committing crimes, so many uh, type of crimes. But uh, when they are given like amnesty, like the recent amnesty by, by the president, mm. we also read that uh, most of those who committed, you know, crimes after being released, you know, by, by the president through the amnesty, they were females. So what does it tell us about the the situation of, uh, about women in, in, in real life, you know, uh, circumstances. How can women be helped? You are working with women every day. How have you tried, you know, as fem, fem priests to, to help such women who are coming from prisons 
and need some form of support? These women, they really need support. If we are co going to complete the rehabilitation and the reintegration part of uh, a prison, we are saying, yes, they get into prison, they learn skills, they do whatever they do there, then the amnesty comes. These women, they are not prepared to go home because they haven't been given enough psychosocial support. And uh, the, the, the victims, they are not ready to receive them. The family is not ready to receive them. Because when women commit crimes, uh, remember prisons were built for men. Even if we look at our, uh, the infrastructure of the 46 prisons that you are talking about in Zimbabwe, only three or four prisons have got a special unity for women, but the rest they don't have. So, crime was considered to be a male activity. For a man to be considered to be very clever, he can commit crime and go to jail and come back because he is jailed. But for a woman, uh, it's not acceptable. It's still not acceptable by our community. This is why you find after the president gives amnesty to these women, they still come back to prison. But we have here Baba Ano. Baba Ano is saying, we say battery repo in zero problem. What do you say about that? It's not about it, Baba Anu. But it's about our mindset. We have lived for a long time when we have let corruption rule us. We have lived with people who think they are above the law. This is why we have such things as Bato, Mapato. Changing Bato now, when things are like this, yes, it's okay. But if we change our mindset, or we get into a new Bato, which is the same. Because you know, as in Makomo, Ano Tapu Zirana Mute, Aditka, they learn from the all this we are saying about uh, uh, punitive correctional measures in prisons, it was inherited. It was never changed. It's now when we, in 2013, when the constitution is there, uh, now we are talking of correctional services, where we think. So it, it has to be the whole system, whether you are bad or you are not bad, please change the mindset. So that Zimbabwe moves, moves forward. Okay. Because it's about us, the citizens of Zimbabwe. And uh, the other thing, maybe it's about the implementation of uh, uh, the laws, you know. Laws are there, but sometimes uh, they just ignored as if they don't exist. Uh, recently, I think in March, cabinet passed uh, a sweeping prison system reform bill, uh, the Prisons Act. So this noted uh, new prisons act, do you think it will be effective enough uh, in this country where the uh, justice criminal system is, you know, uh, not being taken seriously? You know, things are just happening and nobody uh, is uh, accountable. Do you think this uh, bill will be effective enough uh, to make sure that uh, inmates are also you know, considered as human and they are treated and given at the basics that they require as humans. And even the community themselves, they also, you know, neglected their relatives when they leave our prisons. What do you say? What I say is that we can have a law put in place. But if we don't have the political will to implement and if we don't have the resources as well, it, it also comes to issues of resources. Because uh, this awareness uh, to say there's a prison bill, there's a pre new prison act, this is the now Zimbabwe prisons and correctional services. How many people have got that information? They know to go jail, go jail. Because there's no implementation from 2013. We're still holding on to the Constitution 
that gives us rights. But do we know the rights? Because there isn't enough awareness that has been given. And uh, the most um, uh, ironic thing about it is that we choose what we want from the Constitution. That benefits me. And it doesn't benefit anybody else. So for us to move forward when that we have the prison bill, it's just commitment. What we need is a government that commits itself to implement some of these policies which are very finely constructed that gives people enough room to live uh, with human dignity. But we don't have, because they are not being implemented. Why are we not implementing it? Some of these awareness campaigns can be done free, like a roadshow. You don't need a lot of money to do a roadshow. So are you saying it's about uh, priorities? It's about priorities. How do our priorities stand? Is it to benefit just me as an individual? Because uh, 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 what disturbs me most is prisons is like for the poor people. We have seen so many high-profile people being arrested. Being arrested and investigations met. And in the end, when everybody is saying, ah, I think because we have a, a public opinion, a, 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 a court or our own courts, we say, yes, we know this person is, has committed a crime. But because he's high profile, he doesn't go to jail. He doesn't. Because he looks for the best lawyers. And the person has got resources as well. And the person has got resources. I can give you an example of uh, 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 the uh, officer, uh, Matanga, I'm sorry, I'm not so sure. Last week, he was police commissioner general. Police commissioner general. He was out in public to say there was somebody who was arrested with 700 grams of what of cocaine versus somebody who has got so many kgs of uh, of the contraband. This one was given fine, and the other one was given a custodial sentence. So what are we saying? What are we saying? Selective application of judgments. That goes to our judiciary again. We should be serious about these issues because if somebody who has never been to school or who has never worked, he defrauds the government, he gets a lot of money and he goes into public that you are learned but you have no money. I'm not learned. I'm not saying uh, education versus uh, non-education because we all have got different capacities to make money. But let it be clean money. But when you go out in public to say you are not educated, you go on your Facebook page and you start um, provoking. So how many children, what are we learning from uh, such kind of people? It says I'm promoting uh, corrupt uh, activities that you can get any money. It's who you wine and dine with. Yeah, we have Kuda Kwashe Siapea. Kuda says Zimbabwe legislation system is just sick and corrupt. Very irritating. It is irritating. It is irritating. Because we read every day. We, we also compare the notes. So how can we correct all these anomalies? I think... Uh, as many voices as we can, because I believe that if we all speak to it, let's raise awareness. Let's um, engage those who are in the legal system to do appeals for us. Because uh, there is also a section where we can do a citizen's arrest. We can also do a citizen's appeal 
to some of these judgments because they are so sickening. It is really sickening. I, 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 I side with him. It is sickening. Uh, viewers, I think uh, we have uh, come to the end of our program and we would want to thank our guests, uh, Ms. Nyampinga, uh, for sharing with us uh, your views, uh, your educational views, uh, you know, information that she, she, had, she has uh, in this uh, aspect of, uh, you know, the prison system and all that. Uh, thank you so much for watching our program. Uh, for more, you can go to our website, www.newzimbabwe.com. You can also visit our YouTube channel, uh, that is New Zim TV or simply go to our Twitter handle, newzimbabwe.com. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.